This is part eight of the Delta seven inch motor driven bench grinder rebuild series. If you haven't seen part seven, click the link at the top of the screen. In this video, we will finish the assembly. Hello everyone, I'm Jeff and welcome to my shop. We got a lot to cover, so let's get to it. So here we are on the right side and I'm pulling the bearing seal out of the 5W30 and drying it off with a paper towel. And then I'm applying some super lube to the milled surface on both the wheel cover and the bearing hub. And we will install the bearing seal. Then install the wheel cover. Make sure that the bearing seal is protruding into the bore of the wheel cover. And you have two socket head screws to secure all of that together. Next, we'll install the inner flange. And then the inner flange nut. I'll tighten that down. And here we are with the grinder upside down and we're installing the Austin fittings for the power cord and the two twin lights. We'll just tighten those down in place. Same, same. And here we've got the power cord. And I need to strip off some shielding here so that we've got room to play with those three wires coming out of it. And then I'm installing a terminal, a ring terminal, on the end of the black wire because that's going to connect to the switch. And we can route the power cord in through the Austin fitting. Make sure we've got enough room with all the wires to figure out where we're going to put the wire stress relief. And this is a hog ring or a hog loop. I end up going back and I didn't film it where I put a rubber grommet on there as well. Uh, but... Yeah, you just need to put something on there so the wire doesn't pull out of the base. Because the Austin fitting doesn't really tighten down super tight on this wire. It's actually thinner in diameter than the original. Next, we'll go ahead and connect the black power cord wire to the switch. And we've already got that other black wire connected to the switch. And then we're going to cut a short piece of uh, ground wire and put a larger ring terminal on it and shrink all that down with the heat shrink. And then we can attach it to one of the mounting bolts for the base to the stator. And that's how we're going to ground everything. So 
So the next thing we're going to do is go ahead and in install the switch. So we've got that switch panel that goes on the outside of the base. I'm just making sure I got it oriented correctly and then insert the switch through it. And then it's got a little nut that goes on the outside that holds it all in place. Next, we'll tighten down the Austin fittings. And next, we're going to install the studs for the twin lights. So there's one that goes in each one of those wheel covers. We're just going to tighten it down with a pair of vice grips. And now we can install the twin lights. So I'm just looking to make sure that the wiring in there is routed so that the stud doesn't get hung up on that stud. And then we can put the large cap nuts or acorn nuts on top. And then we can tighten those down with a three quarter inch wrench. I'm just being careful here not to mar up the twin light in the process because that wrench, if you turn it too far, it'll nick the, the area just below the nut. All right, so I've already routed the two wires for the twin lights inside and tightened them down with those Austin fittings. So now we're going to look at the wiring on the inside of the base. So this is real simple. You've got all the greens go together, all the whites go together, and all the blacks go together. Once you've got them twisted, I put a piece of heat shrink on there to keep them together, and then I solder them, and then they get... Uh, wire nuts and then I wrap those wire nuts with electrical tape and that is the easiest wiring job you will ever see now we can put the base cover on and tighten it down with the two screws And then we can install the four rubber feet. And these are not the OEM rubber feet. I got these off of Amazon. And I think they're one inch in diameter and one inch tall. And they've got a three eighths hole through the center of them but they work perfectly. So next we need to loosen the two twin lights and swing them out of place. And that will give us room to install the rest of the components. So the next thing we're going to install is the two wheels. And for this build, I've got a 60 grit and a 36 grit. And I've got some aluminum bushings that will allow me to install these wheels on this grinder. However, what I didn't realize at this point is that I'm only using the one inch bushing and I need to use the second bushing as well. So these wheels actually have some play in them right now and I go back and correct that later, but 
you'll see why it's kind of important here in a minute. So they're not centered on the rotor and that discrepancy becomes evident when we go to try to line up the spark arresters and the tool rest. But at this point I didn't really realize that so I don't see it yet but you'll see it here in a second. So obviously both of those wheels got uh, large flat washers on them and then they get the nuts and each one of the, the left side has got a left hand thread. And here we are with the spark aristers. And so I thought I had it. And then when I start spinning the wheel here, you'll see how the wheel is kind of floppy. <laughs> I don't know another way to explain that, but uh, that's because that wheel is not centered. And the same problem exists with this one. But that's an easy fix. I've got the proper bushings. I just didn't put them in at that time. Next, we're installing the two outer wheel covers. And each one of those has three of these screws that we painted black. And after we've got both of those installed, then we can go ahead and lock down the two twin lights. So I really like these twin lights. I, I, you know, Delta went above and beyond with the design of these twin lights. Uh, the next thing we're going to install is the uh, assembly for the tool rest. So this is the tool rest arm and it has a screw that just tightens down and tightens it in place. There's no other hardware there except for the screw and the arm. Those went in way easier than they came out. Next, we have a screw, a washer, and then the tool rest link, and then a fiber washer. And that screws directly into the arm. And that fiber washer kind of acts as a lock washer when you lock everything in place. You have kind of the same assembly for the tool rest itself. You have a screw, a washer, the fiber washer, and then the tool rest. And we just play with these three various screws until we get the tool rest position where we want it and the proper spacing off of the wheel. And then you lock everything down. And we'll do the exact same thing for the right side. So next we've got uh, a capture screw and this is just to lock the water or the quench cup in place. You've got the quench cup and the quench cup bracket. And some of these don't have that screw on the side but this one does. 
On my other grinder, there's no screw on either side, which is no big deal. It's not like the quench cup is going anywhere. So now we're going to go ahead and test the grinder. And that's a problem. So all the wiring is correct. And I end up tearing this whole thing down and ohming the lead wires coming off of the coil. And sure enough, one of them, the start coil, I'm getting no continuity out of it. So there's a break in that coil somewhere. But we have a plan. We're hopefully going to get this thing fixed. It may take a couple of months to get done. Once we get it fixed, I'll post another video letting everybody know that it's fixed and up and running. Until then, this is the grinder as it stands right now. It looks great, but it doesn't run. And I apologize to everyone that it's not running, but some days you're the bug, some days you're the windshield. In any case, it's not the end of the world. I had fun working on this, and I think it looks great. And if I get it running, it will run great. So I hope you enjoyed this series. And other than the fact that this grinder is not running, if you followed this series with your grinder, it should work. Uh, if you got any questions or comments, leave them in the comments section below. In the meantime, I have a short video series coming up on one of the Craftsman Drill Press accessories. That'll be really fun to work on. And then I've got a Gen 4 Craftsman Emerson drill press to rebuild. So regardless of the outcome, I hope you enjoyed this video series. And if you did, please like and subscribe. If you got any comments, leave them in the section below. I will respond to them as fast as I can. As always, I appreciate the support and I will see you next time.